How did you become her assistant then? Um, you know, I I just got a phone call um, end of February 07, and um, she called and just wanted to hang out and stuff, and kind of like one thing led to the next, and we were hanging out a lot, and I ended up living with her, and um, you know, she didn't have an assistant at that time, and so it just kind of made sense since I was living there and stuff just to um, just work for her and help her out with some things that she needed help with. You were an assistant, though, with her during a very, like, turbulent, crazy time. Yes. What was it like being on the other side? I mean, there's a lot of things that we read about. How was Brittany during that time? You know, I feel like, honestly, the media, you know, there were definitely some things that needed to be handled in certain situations, but I feel like the media made it appear a lot more insane than it really was. And I think because of the paparazzi and so many of them, it was a minimum 50 people following us. I think because there were so many people following us, it made everything look so much more hectic. We couldn't even go to Starbucks and get a drink. I mean, mm. it, was, it, was, it was crazy. But during that time, they're saying Brittany's bipolar, she's postpartum. Did you see any of those things? Um, no, I just, I feel like, you know, she had, she had kids fast. It was very, you know, close. She, you know, there was a divorce going on and that's a lot for a young person to handle. And I feel like when it's thrown out, you know, for everyone to see and it's not a private, it's not, you know, you can't handle it just like behind closed doors that it just, it just makes it more difficult. You said the divorce and the custody battle. What was Brittany's, or yours too, like what was her mindset at the time of this custody battle it's just it's really it's really weird when you're involved in something like that because I think you never you know I, I think you never think your life's gonna get to that point where you know you're going to be you know getting divorced and you know custody with kids and just stuff like that I don't know we're in our 20s and you're used to seeing other people go through that but I think right. you know that you don't expect yourself to be in that situation and you know, I think she just had to deal with everything that was coming her way, you know, and it was a lot of stuff, and she just tried the best she could. And I just tried to help, you know, out along the way as much as I could. What could you say to her at, during that time? Because obviously you're trying to get a career going. She's actually trying to have a career outside of this crazy paparazzi stuff. But what could you say to her while this custody battle's going on and the paparazzi's coming down on her? What were the conversations? Just inside? really, um, you know, focus on yourself, focus on what needs to be done. Don't get on the internet and read all that stuff. It's really unhealthy to get on there and, you know, read the comments and the different things people are putting up because they're very hurtful. And, um, you know, it's just, you have to kind of zone out of reading all that and paying attention to it and just worry about um, you know, yourself and what the people around you think about you that really know you. So I just told her, you know, just to focus on that and, you know, obviously kids were the main priority, you know, getting everything in line personally and then it was, okay, jump back into the studio and everything like that. It's just, it was kind of, you know, baby steps just to get everything lined back up. Where were you the night that she barricaded herself in a room in a and shipped off to the hospital. I was in New York. I had just landed. Um, I had something that I was doing with um, Us Weekly, and I had a lot of friends from home meeting me out here. So literally, I didn't know until I turned on the TV also. Did you talk to her that night? Or? No, I didn't. I was actually going to come home, and they said just, I was only here for three days. So right. they said just finish your trip and come back on Sunday because, you know, she can't have visitors or anything until then anyway so I just I stayed here and then I just you know I went back home and visited her and you know just tried to be a good friend what was her mindset behind behind all these things that we see when you talk to her or, or you know she's postpartum she's going crazy to the the public everyone's like she's losing her mind no I mean when you were sitting down talking to her on an everyday basis it wasn't like that at all I mean you know, I, I think when it came to that actual event that happened, it was a mom just being protective of a mom and was, didn't want her kids to leave, you know? I mean, it's weird when you have kids three days a week and you're used to having them all day, every day, and taking care of them. She's a very, very hands-on mom, and so she would do every... She liked to do everything herself, you know? And so I think it was hard for her, you know, when she had to, like, let them go and stuff like that, and people took it as 
you know, she was being extreme. I mean, honestly, I'd probably do the same thing, but nobody would know about it because nobody else would be right. in my business of all that kind of stuff, you know? Right. You did visit her the second time when she went to UCLA. Yeah. How was she then in the hospital as you, you were bringing her? Fi fine. Honestly, fine. So <laughs> the, the outside's like she's going nuts. I what? feel like because, and I feel like this with everything LA-wise, with the paparazzi and, and, and stuff, people didn't understand why we were going places, why we were going shopping, why we, why we were going out to eat. And it doesn't matter how big your house is. If you feel like you can't leave a place and you're confined, I mean, we're young. There's nothing wrong with us going out to eat. We're not going out for attention. We're going out because we want to go out to a restaurant, you know? And I just feel like that, um, you know, people didn't understand that. Right. I don't, I don't know. No, I mean, you, you're, you say things, you're, you're saying things, that, and I thank you for it very well. Um, when Brittany lost custody mm -hmm. of the kids, and prior to that, when that was all going on, did you, being with Brittany, see anything that it made sense to you? Brittany should lose custody of her kids. No, I don't. I think that's, that was a really, really harsh step. Um, I feel like just with everything going on, that it kind of gave certain, you know, people the advantage to be able to go in and do something about that and get more custody, that kind of thing, just because everything did seem so, you know, out of hand in a way. And like I said, I'm not saying that just like certain things didn't need to, you know, be taken care of and focused on and that kind of thing. But I, I, I do think it was just, it looked a lot worse than it was. Right. Talking to her. I mean, I lived there. I wouldn't have been in the situation where, I mean, I didn't look stressed every day walking around, you know? Right. <laughs> Like inside, talking to her, this whole crazy thing's going on, the publicity that everybody's... And we're inside, like, you know, cooking dinner and, you know, sitting out by the pool and painting our fingernails and having, you know, just being girls, being friends, just talking about stuff. The public perception then, as, you, as you're saying, it was public perception how crazy and that maybe Brittany was having some issues. Inside, you didn't see anything at all that made sense to you, like, boy, Brittany is getting, having some real issues here and she needs help? I, I think that, like I said, I think that, you know, when you have kids that close together and when you're going through different things, you know, I think everybody has a different way of handling stuff. And like I said, I just feel like because hers was thrown out in front of everyone that all of these different opinions were coming in and all of these judgments were coming in and you know you get on the computer and you're looking at that when you shouldn't but you're curious what people are saying and and you're having people follow you all day long to where you feel like you can't do anything and get away or you know have any really peace of mind we couldn't even lay out in the backyard without paparazzi rolling down the hill into the fence yeah. you know so I think that starts just kind of getting to you and if you throw it to the side too much and don't break it down really on a daily basis, it just builds up and it gets to be kind of too much to where then you have to sit back and handle it all like she's like she's done the last year and really right. worked through it all and back on stage and, you know, back with the kids all the time and that kind of thing, you know? It's interesting then because you're sort of, in other words, you're saying that inside Brittany and Brittany's camp and your friendship, it was okay, but it was actually the multiplication of the paparazzi of it getting hotter and hotter and things are getting crazier and crazier that maybe put her yeah, it builds in that up spot. and then it just it, it just builds up you know and and you're focusing on other stuff when you know because you shouldn't have to worry about all the paparazzi and stuff adding a whole you know other level to things so if you don't just stop and deal with it all right then it just I think it definitely gets to a mm. point where it like when she was in you guys are driving around shop I was reading all the past articles when you guys are driving around and shopping and to the outside world it was like Britney's losing it yeah and we want attention and we're leaving the house because you know we want to get pictures taken my favorite thing to do to this day and since I could drive was get in the car turn on some music just ride around like ride down PCH just you know just clear your head and I remember one day she did that poor thing and it was like in a magazine of the map. It was like a map of where she went and it looked like she was just going back and forth and all over and didn't know where she was going. Right. 
and we were just riding around trying to <laughs> enjoy just kind of enjoy ourselves and like decompress. <laughs> was she getting more and more stressed at the time? Like, was it evident though in your conversations, like it, the part, things were getting out of control for her? It was just the fact that you know we both felt like we couldn't leave and go anywhere or do anything. We couldn't even go on vacation. Like, even if we thought we got somewhere and mm -hmm. nobody knew where we were, like where we were from like covering up the tail number or whatever on the plane, they were always there right when we got there. I mean. <laughs> right. when, like to the point where she did barricade herself in a room and try and do with the kids. At that point, did you actually in some strange sense understand where she was in that mindset? I wasn't ready for that when it happened and I was here. So it was hard for me because I didn't really know why or what was going on. And the only thing I was seeing was stuff on the TV but I knew her so well, obviously, on a personal level that I was going, okay, you know, what's going on? I just wish I would have been there because I feel like, you know, when you have someone there with you, there's somebody to kind of, that understands where you're coming from, kind of talk you through things. Right. I mean, who knows? I don't have kids yet. I could very well, you know, if that happened to me, be like, no, they're not leaving right now. I want to spend another day with them. Right. They're, it's my baby. <laughs> when did you first talk to her after that night? Um, when I got back in town and went to see her. And how was she then? Like, what she did she... She was just like, I just wasn't ready for them, you know, to go home. And I was like, that's understandable. When, when certain things like that happened, I honestly, and it was in the past, like, I wasn't there during certain events that, you know, happened in January, February, that kind of thing, before I was working with her. And so I, I don't, I'd never brought those up. I, I'm not a nosy person, if you want to tell me you know, why you did something or why you're thinking something or, you know, why something happened, then I'm all ears and I'm, I'll definitely be there for anybody. But I don't believe in prying and, and just, you mm. know, asking stuff about things that happened in the past when I, you know, wasn't around. Or. How, did you guys, long before all this being mm -hmm. cousins, did you guys hang out long before? When we you started hanging out my senior year of high school when I moved to Mississippi because I was living right on the Mississippi-Louisiana line, literally a mile from Kentwood. And it was right before her song came out. Mm -hmm. And um, right when she started going on tour with NSYNC and, you know, opening for them. So it was, it was a crazy experience to see, you know, someone that you knew just their career just really take off like that. I mean, who can say that they have a career like she's had? I mean, nobody really even expects for something to get that, you know, big right. worldwide. I mean, very few people. Um, I just my mic. How much would you say that you being an assistant with Brittany is helping where you are now musically? I think it's a double-edged sword, honestly. I think it's great in the aspect of, you know, People want to do, say, magazine shoots and that type of things, and you you get to go to really cool events and stuff like that. But um, when it comes to the music, I feel like you have to work really hard to prove yourself because, you know, in my case, everybody just figured, oh, I lived with her for a year, so it looks like it's fun to be a pop star. You know, I started singing when I was really little. And, um, you know, so I've just been working really hard and, just really trying to, in a way, separate myself from all of that too, because obviously I'm used to having my own identity, and that was kind of lost in that year, year and a half Brittany's that I assistant. was with her. Yeah, and I mean that was that was kind of hard for me because I was never used to that, and um, so I've just been working really hard, you know, working on my music and stuff like that to put something out that's wonderful, so the music can speak for itself. And it's going to take a little while. I know that. And I'm in it for the long run. So right. I'm ready. I'm ready for any challenge. <laughs> now, this is a question that's been up in the air in the paparazzi. So, uh -huh. or in the, not even paparazzi, I'm sorry. This question's been up in the air in the press. So I'll just ask you point blank. Okay. Were you fired as her assistant? No. Or did Brittany say, go bait music? She was like, go, you're still, I still lived with her after I wasn't working with her. And um, we were still best friends. She was just like, you need to go work on your own stuff. I'm going to be your assistant for the day. I'm going to come bring you Starbucks. You know, I mean, she's a sweetheart. She's honestly one of the sweetest girls ever. She has a great heart. She's very giving, and she wants everybody to succeed. She's not, I mean, she's, you know, right. Britney Spears career-wise. I mean, come on. She's not worried about, right. you know, me doing something that I love. She wants that. 
What about the report that her dad said, you can't come around anymore or you're going to have to deal with Brittany's lawyers? Yeah, um, he definitely said that. Um, and I, you know, I don't have a problem with people knowing that. I, I don't want people to think that she and I got in a fight and that's why I'm not hanging out with her. Um, you know, they're very controlling and that's fine. And I just step back and when things, you know, even out a little more and she's able to give me a call, I look forward to the day that I can sit down and catch up with her. But it actually, between those two statements, then it sounds like it's a real separation between your relationship with what Brittany said and what Brittany's dad in the camp says. I think that, um, you know, I think that she definitely wasn't up for the fact that she was losing certain control on a lot of different aspects of her life because of her age and everything. And I, I think that they didn't want any, they've pretty much cut out everyone, honestly. There are a few people around her that work for her, and that's the extent of it, other than her immediate family. And I think they were just trying to keep everyone out that, you know, possibly that she would reach out to maybe to help change the situation. So, but w when that statement was made, I was like, this is way over my head, and I just couldn't deal with it. So I just took a step back. Smart. <laughs> you know, yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm not going to fight nine lawyers and parents. <laughs> I'll just, she can call me in a little while and then we'll hang out again. <laughs> Do you think that Brittany had any part in, in that statement, in any part? And when you, you're talking about the family and the, no, everyone cutting out? I don't at all. I, I, I know, I know she didn't, honestly, so. And, and what do you think in her comeback now, what is her, her awareness, do you think, of the situation around her that she that her dad is saying you can't come back in? And do you think she's aware of all She this? knew that was going on at the time, absolutely, you know. And um, But I think, I think she just realized that, okay, this is how it is right now. I need to, um, I need to focus on certain things, and that's what I'm going to do. And I think she's, you know, doing it for herself. You know, her career is back up at the top. Um, you know, her relationship with her kids seems wonderful. And I think that, you know, it just comes to a point where you get tired of just fighting things all the time, and so maybe you just, you just sit back and you just kind of deal with what has been really, you know, laid in front of you, and you just. You just do it. <laughs> just do it and live life. What do you think of her sort of reincarnation and how she's come back and, and trying to re I think it's amazing. I mean, I think she'll be around as long as she ever wants to be around. Um, she's an incredible dancer, an incredible performer. Her songs are amazing. I mean, and she's very, very talented, and she's worked for a very long time since she was really little, you know, to get there. And... I'm very, you know, I'm very proud of her. I'm so glad that she's back on stage performing. If, you know, that's what she wants to be doing. That's what she's, that's what she's so good at. Um, you mentioned that, you know, you thought when everyone thought she was crazy or postpartum and all these things that she was actually fine. I mean, not fine, but you thought she was handling quite well and it was a paparazzi getting out of hand. But at the same time, do you think she needed this step back that happened over the last year and a half? Do you think there was a point where I obviously? Think, yeah, I think she needed a little step back. Do I think it should have been as harsh as it was? No, I yeah. don't. I don't think it was necessary to, um, you know, cut everyone out, especially people that weren't a bad influence, you know? I mean, I don't do anything bad, right. you know? So right. I just thought... I just thought that some things were very extreme, and I guess if that's what they felt like they needed to do, then that's what they, you know, that's what they did. That's out of my control, so. When was the last time you actually spoke with her? Oh, my gosh. Um, like, end of March of last year. Long time. It's been over a year. It's sad. Yeah, I miss her. Nice. She was, I mean, I lived with her for a year, right. you know? What was your last conversation like? Was it? Did you know that all this was coming, or was it just a... No, we, neither one of us thought it was going to last this long. Right. It was kind of like, call you call you in a month when, you know, we go back to court, you know, and then it was right. just like on and on and on and on until it was, you know, permanent for now, so... And you mentioned in some... Um, you mentioned what something I read this morning about being subpoenaed for court, and you said, I'm not going to touch this. Yeah, no. No. I, um, I, I actually got subpoenaed for the custody case. And I was in there for eight hours. It was just brutal, you know. But, I mean, I just sat in there and told the truth. There was nothing bad to say. Right. So it wasn't a big deal. But when it came to all of this other stuff, I, I just was like, 
please leave me out of this. I won't bother y'all. If you don't bother me, I'd like to move on with what I'm working on, yeah. you know? And, um, and music's been a great outlet for me yeah. regarding all that. I mean, even, you know, with Driving Blind and everything, it's, I, I heard the song and it's about missing someone. And I loved it because everybody can relate to it, whether it's boyfriend, girlfriend, someone passing away, you know, losing a friend, someone moving away. And when I heard it, the first thing I thought about was, you know, moving away from my parents and then missing her as a friend. And so I recorded it and, you know, put it out there and just, I do want people to know that though, because I want her to know that. Right. I want her to know that when she hears it, that, you know, that it is about her and I miss her friendship. And even though I haven't talked to her in a year that, you know, I'm definitely here for her and, you yeah, know, and because of her. that 